Refereeing in mixed martial arts is no easy feat. Deciding when to halt a fight is a judgment call one must execute with pinpoint accuracy. With uh, Mr. Danzing and uh, white women, I f***ed it up. Because there's little room for error. Yet, there have been moments where referees hesitated a bit too much before stepping in, or prematurely stopped a fight they were not supposed to. Man, Man that was the worst stoppage in the history of UFC. So here are the 10 worst early stoppages in UFC history. Wyman vs Mac Danzig. Let's kick things off by diving into what could have been considered one of the worst submission calls a referee can pull off. The unfortunate incident happened at UFC 115 in 2010, where Matt Wyman and Mac Danzig clashed in a lightweight showdown that didn't quite live up to the hype. Wyman was on the offensive from the start, staying one dance move ahead of Danzig, and then out of the blue, he wrapped Danzig up in a guillotine choke. Danzig, though, was playing the self-defense game pretty well. Yet, our dear referee Yi Levine saw the situation through a different lens and hit the brakes, thinking Danzig had gone to sleep. It is all over! No, that was wrong. He was not out. He was not out. That was a tremendous, tremendous mistake. Danzig protests after, but that's all he could do. And you don't feel good like the one in Vancouver with uh, Minister Danzig and uh, white women. I fucked it up. Fast forward a year later, the two fought again with Wyman winning fair and square. Shane Nelson versus Aaron Riley. He just calls it off and I'm completely clear eyed, pull my mouthpiece out and I scream, what in the f are you doing? <laughs> in another lightweight showdown, Shane Nelson and Aaron Riley engage in an intriguing battle at UFC 96 in 2009, where the initial seconds saw them sizing each other up. 30 seconds into the fight, however, Nelson threw a punch that caught Riley off guard, dropping him like a hot potato. Nelson followed with a barrage of punches and bunches, although Riley was far from being in the danger zone. Now, here's where the referee entered the equation with some rather peculiar ideas. Sensing a catastrophe, the referee decided to dive in and hit the emergency stop button and this stoppage was way too early a tremendous mistake. The two had had a rematch a year later and determined to restore his honor, Riley won by unanimous decision, proving that revenge can indeed be a dish best served in the octagon. Man, Man that was the worst stoppage in the history of UFC. It was pathetic. Ryan Jensen vs Steve Steinbeast. Now if a thumbs up isn't enough to convince the referee that you're doing okay, then perhaps the jazz hands routine would do the trick. Steve Steinbeast learned this lesson the hard way when he faced Ryan Jensen Jensen in 2009 in what would become a fight with more drama than a Shakespearean play. Halfway through the first minute of their fight, Jensen executed a takedown. After a minute and a half of grappling gymnastics, Jensen wrapped his arm around Steinbeast's neck in a tight guillotine. Demonstrating his effective defense, Steinbeast offered a thumbs up to the referee, a plea to let the show go on. However, referee Gary Ritter turned a blind eye to his gesture, bringing the curtain down a few seconds before the first round. That's it is Locked it up. Ryan like Jensen wins for the first time. Steinbeast was upset. The crowd a lot more. Unfortunately, that wasn't the last time we saw such a refereeing blunder. Danny Roberts vs Claudio Silva. In the welterweight contest between Danny Roberts and Claudio Silva in 2009, our protagonist found himself in a situation similar to Steinbeast's unfortunate loss. Roberts and Silva engaged in a riveting back and forth fight for two rounds, and in the third round, Roberts fell victim to Silva's submission. As the Brazilian attempted to talk an arm, Roberts elicited some sort of sound, a grunt perhaps, making referee Kevin Sataki think that he verbally tapped. As a result, Sataki stopped the fight. Doing it. Oh, he's out. What happened? What has he done? Did he tap? Oh, it's a verbal tap. Robert's protest. Dana White was angry, but lesson learned. Don't yell random stuff when you're defending a submission. When that ref stopped that, I was already out of that armbar. I, yeah, I might have made noise, I might have grunted, it hurt. We hadn't finished, I wasn't done. I'm just glad it didn't stop when it did. Leandro Silva vs Drew Dober. Luckily, not every stupid referee call gets a pass. When Drew Dober faced submission maestro Leandro Silva in 2015, he knew he was about to waltz into a submission minefield. As the battle unfolded, Silva seized the 
opportunity and dropped for a guillotine, putting the American in a world of trouble. Despite Dover being in a tough spot, he showcased a flawless defense, but referee Eduardo Hurdy seemed to have a different script in mind. Just as Dover miraculously slipped his head out of the clutches of the guillotine, Hurdy, perhaps caught up in the drama, waved off the fight. The stoppage was exceptionally bad. What? Oh my god. Looked like the referee called the foul. Oh my goodness, no way. Forgettable moment here tonight for Eduardo Herdy. No. Trent Dover is stunned. No way. I can survive a guillotine from half guard. I did not tap. There was no thought of tapping. But since the fight took place in Brazil, the country's athletic commission refused to bear the embarrassment and quickly overturned the decision into a draw. U.S. commissions take note. Robbie Lawler vs. Ben Askren Ben Askren's UFC debut against Robbie Lawler in 2019 was utter chaos. Askren's journey in the octagon took a rocky turn from the get-go, when after executing a takedown, he got hoisted up and slammed hard by Lawler. After slamming Askren to the mat, Lawler continued his relentless assault in the Form of ground and pound. The wrestling phenom exhibited remarkable composure, however, bouncing back to his feet and executing a perfectly timed takedown. Ben not only regained control but also transitioned into a position to apply a bulldog choke that seemingly sent Lawler into slumber. The former UFC welterweight champion's arms apparently went limp, or did it? He's out! He's out! choke and it was on his head and it was not on the blood. Oh no. That was a bad stoppage. Oh no. Lawler angrily protested as soon as referee Herb Dean called an end to the contest. The aftermath left many pondering whether Dean should have taken extra measures to ensure the legitimacy of the stoppage. Nobody's going to know whether he was conscious or unconscious. What I saw, I saw everything that would indicate I'm seeing an unconscious fighter. I see an arm go limp for no reason whatsoever. With that same situation, with an arm going limp, with that type of a choke on someone, I don't see that I should do something different. Renan Barrow vs Uriah Faber now moving on, having already beaten Uriah Faber in their first encounter, Renan Barrow showcased why he was the superior fighter overall when the two met for the second time at UFC 269. The Brazilian maestro demonstrated his dominance by outstriking Faber, which led to an early tumble in the first round. Although Faber resiliently rose to his feet, he found himself back on the canvas after another devastating drop. Like a relentless bloodhound on the scent of victory, Barrow capitalized on the situation by unleashing a barrage of hammer fists. Referee Herb Dean, who was closely monitoring the action, missed Uriah's thumbs up signal, unfortunately, leading to the premature stoppage. Dean on top of the action! Hit it all it. over! No. Hit it Burrell! Remains the Bantamweight champion! Faber, understandably agreed by the abrupt conclusion, couldn't shake off the disappointment. Yeah. Herb Dean really is a friend of mine. Yeah. He's going to get a lot of crap for that regardless. I feel like he knows, looking back, that I could have kept on fighting and everyone else does. So Very unfortunate. It was, it was a good job by Burrell. Also, Burrell was looking up and playing at him and I had his leg and I was covering my face and it was just a bad situation. Yet, yeah, in fairness, Burrell's performance that night was a testament to him operating on an entirely different plane of skill and dominance. He would have won unless Faber pulled a rabbit out of his hat. Marcus Silveria vs. Kazushi Sakuraba. Now let's wind the clock back to the era of the OGs of the fight game and turn the pages of UFC history to UFC Japan in 1997. The event was marked by what could arguably be deemed one of the most outrageous early stoppages, if not the absolute worst in MMA. The stage was was set for a clash between Marcus Silveria and hometown hero Kazushi Sakuraba in the UFC Japan heavyweight tournament. A minute into the fight, Sakuraba got caught with a clean shot from Silveira and immediately level changed for a takedown. Despite the Japanese sensation not being in any sort of danger, referee John McCarthy prematurely intervened, calling a halt to the contest under the impression that Sakuraba was severely hurt. Against the octagon fence. The match is over. Oh my gosh. Big John McCarthy felt Sakuraba was in trouble there. Sakuraba is distraught. Silvera. Now Sakuraba trying to work the microphone. Controversial decision cast a shadow over the event, but justice prevailed as the call was overturned on the same night. The subsequent rematch between the two fighters saw Sakuraba emerge victorious. Oh, 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 oh
that's it, Sakuraba. Now in all of the instances you've come across thus far, the guilty parties were in their senses when they made their calls. For referee Keith Peterson, that dude had cigarettes and alcohol before refereeing, according to Dominic Cruz. My experience of him was smelling like he had been out all night the night before, like cigarettes and alcohol, and he could not make eye contact with me. Henry Cejudo vs Dominic Cruz. In his first bantamweight title defense, Henry Cejudo extended the octagon invitation to Dominic Cruz after a four-year hiatus at UFC 249. Evident in Cruz's challenge to find his rhythm after the extended layoff. Cejudo's relentless assault mostly comprised of punishing leg kicks until an unintentional class of heads that opened a cut on Cejudo. To this day, Cruz maintains he was deprived of the opportunity to claim a third bantamweight title, even accusing Peterson of being influenced while officiating. Shake a referee's hand to make sure that they're like, present with me because their eyes are going so all over the place because he can't. There's something about me he couldn't face. I don't know what it was. That's for him to be in. He can be in that question. Because the second I saw that this referee couldn't look me in the eyes, I said, I wish I had Herb Dean right here, right now. That's the referee I want. And with that, we've concluded our video on the 10 fights that were prematurely stopped. I hope you enjoyed the content. Like and subscribe to our channel. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.